All right, everyone. Welcome to the first ever Barnyard Podcast. Joining me today, shine your spirit stones. It's Jackson. Hello. Yes, me, the Eldar guy. Right? Shop in your choppers and get ready for the big wah. It's Matt. Wah, wow, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Everybody hide your third arms. People are coming. It's Neil. It's a two arms only, I swear. <laughs> it's a two-armed Yes, it's a two-armed Hello, Mr. Two-armed I've got two arms And another thing Just don't talk about it Oh my Jesus Okay, good Alright Alright <laughs> And of course, Vulcan lives It's your host, Fran. Hello, Mr. Fran. Hello, Fran. Alright how about, how about let's start off with what we're doing today Like, what, what have you been painting? What have you been working on? I've been recently working on a Dark Angels Land Raider, um, the first Land Raider I've painted. Uh, I've decided to go nice dark green for it, as opposed to the bone white that most people do, only because I feel really? like, yeah, most of the bone white Land Raiders out there, they're just, they're too much white. Like, I've picked the dark green army for a reason. I don't want to have my entire board taken up by a huge white block. Yeah, it yeah. kind of stand out, eh? Plus, mm. painting a giant white vehicle must be such a pain. It must oh, absolutely. be. Only a moron would attempt that. <laughs> yeah, only absolute idiots. So anyway, Fahan, you and I, like, we'll keep painting some yes. vehicles together. <laughs> because keep green is best. Green, green, is, green best. is best. What about and you, Jack? Matt, is there anything that you would like to share about the driver of said Land Raider on top? Maybe um, the fact that his torso is backwards? Well, I did get what? this second hand. Yeah, he's, um, he's all junk in the front. <laughs> this guy. So, he's got a front butt he's got a front yeah butt. his trunk has been reversed oh yeah. my god he's, he's oh. binoculicious at the front so um yeah. thank you jackson <laughs> so now when people look at it they'll be looking for it yeah <laughs> if he ever I finishes no painting his know. dark angels and gets them on the channel and we'll we'll take a rotating shot of it you'll see mr junk in the front come on the channel <laughs> that's his name mr yeah. junk in the front I, oh my god! I love secondhand Drunk models. Secondhand models are the best. Sometimes you really question, like, <laughs> what was how, going through what, their head? What mental process? Yeah, what mental process did they go through to put his torso on backwards? For anyone out there <laughs> listening that also has a Land Raider and that you built, and the the driver's pelvis is round the wrong way, then we don't mean you. We mean other people who are silly, right, guys? Yeah, yeah, no, no, I, I mean definitely you. mean them. One hundred percent. How dare they? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It's because yeah. of you uh, that Jack, I have to deal what's, with this stuff. Uh, what have you guys been up to? <laughs> I am painting the third edition of Space Hulk. Oh, mm. that's awesome. I am, I've, I've been meaning to get to that as well. That's like a bucket list item for me. Yeah, I've got the Gene Stealers. They're done. They're done All the Gene Stealers are out of the way. I just, I've, I'm just now working my way through the Terminators. And you did the Patriarch, too. I've done the Patriarch. Hmm. Brood Lord. And he ha- he did do a lot of Terminators, but he wants to redo them because he's a madman. I'm not repainting the ones that are painted. I just happen to have duplicate copies that I'm painting differently. Of course you do now. Of course you have duplicates <laughs> of <laughs> just Space Hulk. I, ha- I have two copies of <laughs> yeah. Space Hulk. I'm going to paint at least one of them. Oh, <laughs> yeah. my God. <laughs> Absolutely, yep, and method. that's why all of our gene stealers are Space Hulk. Um, for me, I've been batch painting a lot of infantry. I I painted forty Storm Guardians, and I'm halfway through twenty more Guardians because Games Workshop very kindly removed my troop choice that I like to play with. So now I have to paint more troops. Um, I'm st- boo, I still have knights. Boo, boo. I have to have variety in my army. <laughs> what do you mean there was variety? I just, I'm still using Dire Avengers. I just have to run Guardians now. So you're t- uh, telling me that you're not adding the variety that they're making If anything, there use. was more variety because it was Dire Avengers, Guardians, and Rangers. Now it's just Guardians. It's all Guardians all the time. That Fair sounds enough. like a good problem to have, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Heard you like Guardians, so they put some Guardians on my Guardians. There you go. Yeah, and it's a very generic name as well, so it's really helpful when you're versing anyone else who also has guardians of anything. Very handy. What what are you painting, Farhan? Well, 
I just got through my very, very first unit of Night Haunt. I've, oh, I've just, uh, spooky. I don't, I don't know what it is, but like, I've just kind of absolutely gotten into um, the Night Haunt over like the past week. And I grabbed some secondhand chain rasps, just like a unit of 10. I painted them in like two hours. It was just like, I just sat there and had the time of my life. I think, uh, here we go again, guys. Well, Halloween is coming up. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just a few months away. Just around just the corner. I mean, finished army <laughs> by Halloween, maybe? <laughs> oh, yeah. Probably done before that. Based off of mm. how quickly I finished that unit, definitely. I mean, that is the good right. thing about Night Haunt, though, is the fact that they're simple but have character in their design that you don't necessarily have to put too much thought into when you're painting them yourself. Yeah. Because you can... Just, man, like, dry brush over, for instance. Man, like, that's has been, like, one of the biggest, like, things about the hobby that I actually struggle with. Um, I don't like building minis. So, uh, Jack, like, uh, we, we had this discussion, like, ages ago about how you like your finished models, but not mm. so much the, the process to get there. No, I hate um, the process. Yeah, so I, I'm the same when it comes to building. That's why I build, like, all of the stuff I get as soon as possible so that I can get to the fun stuff, which is painting it. Mm, nice. Um, That's and, fair enough. And, yeah, and Night Hunt just kind of scratches that itch because it's all, like, monopose, but, like, really dynamic looking. Mm. So I don't have to think too much about building it, but I get to have fun when I actually get to paint it. I think building enough. for me is, is, a, is a good part. I like converting every now and then in building. A lot, no, a lot of the time I just build things as normal. But painting is the hard part for me. It's such a slog all the time, mm -hmm. and I'm not a perfectionist. It's like, if it's done and it looks really nice, then it's done. And it ain't getting redone. It's finished for good. <laughs> that that Fair enough, does man. also represent my bajillion boys that have just, like, a face <laughs> coat and wash on their skin. <laughs> I mean, when you're painting boys, right, like... There's a lot to go through. I mean, there are very it low standards for Orc players. Yeah. You I mean, say that. <laughs> I mean, there are, but <laughs> you don't have the to expectation, say that. The expectation <laughs> is right down there. Yeah, true. But, like, the vehicles, they, you pick the army for that reason. You don't pick the Orcs because people put too much effort into how they paint them. Um... But you can put a lot of effort into it, so it's got a lot of it's got a very low difficulty curve. It's it's a sort of thing where you, like, you get out what you put in. Really, mm. try to make sure I get that analogy right. <laughs> um, Sounds right. Yeah, to me. Neanderthal brain just activated there. Uh, welcome to the team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, he's but... leading the team this time. For all of the Neanderthals. <laughs> Yeah, yeah uh, um... things to talk about there. There's one thing that uh, was top of mind for me when they were talking through the Adepticon releases um, and something I'm sure that Neil's frothing over is the Necromunda Ash, Weights, Ash Wastes models um, am, that they've announced. I am and that's ready for these. I am yep. so ready for these. Yes, Did the you notice 40k that... conversion kits. Yeah, pretty much. Did you notice that one of them looks like it has an Eldar like spine on the back, like those little bug strider guys? A uh, what? What yeah, are you there's, saying? There's like a um, when I was looking through them before, I'm pretty sure that one of them has like an Eldar spine from like a wave serpent or something on the back of it. And that they've Eldar? just sort of jerry rigged really? them on a wave serpent. Do you mean a one of the bug rider things? Yeah, yeah, one of those bug dudes. Oh, those bugs look no. wicked, man. Like. Not I, that I see. Look, I'll, I'll be very <laughs> honest. Like, a lot of older Necromunda stuff was not so exciting to me. Um, mm. Especially the... I, I feel like the terrain kits that they had was just a bit... There was a lot going on. And it was all kind of like the same. But this edition is actually looking very much Dune-esque. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I've noticed yes. that as well, yeah. Big I time. want more yeah. apocalyptic world everything's gone to hell let's look at the fringes of the imperium like the what what was really cool about the whole rogue trader era and the very first editions of 40k was that 
you weren't really focused on the imperium of man and what was going on on earth you were focused on the far corners of the galaxy where shit was going down where it was wild west anarchy the the marines were barely in control that's what was really cool about it and as Mm. they shifted more and more into the hardcore lore around you know the horus heresy and then making that in the run-up to all the stuff that's going on in modern 40k they really kind of lost that fringe world really interesting and diverse um kind of lore and background and i just like the fact they're bringing it back that's what's what gets gets me definitely i mean like I, i don't know about you guys i think i'm the only one here who actually plays um the warhammer rpg games um and you get so much variety and so many more like interesting stories out of the 41st millennium um and all, all the other warhammer properties honestly but hmm. um 41st millennium in particular when you start looking at these sort of things hmm. um and yeah i completely agree with you neil like i've i've only really read a little bit little bits and pieces but you definitely see the loss of that um the mystique i guess you could call it mm. yeah like that's, it's, i reckon it's the plug line for me it's the plug line of 40k because the whole thing is like in the far-flung future there is only war and it see it doesn't seem as well scripted as some of the other sci-fi things that are out there like mm. some are really cheesy like some star trek things um, Star Wars has a bunch that are really, really creative and really awesome. But when you try and tell people about the stories from 40K, you have, or even Warhammer in general, you have to lead with, yeah, yeah, yeah it's a Warhammer story. And then they go, oh, it's a Warhammer story? Like mm-hmm. it's not Star Wars or something? Well, pe- and then, people don't realize the By the, the time you depth. get into it, they're great. They're, they're so deep and, and, and rich in story and things like that. But ne- most people never get around to it because they just see it and go, nerd stories. i mean if it does a really good job of advertising it as the war game but you lose out on that depth that depth of lore um in that plug line honestly uh because it does it doesn't paint the whole picture but it paints the whole picture for people who want to play a a war game yeah it's a good starting point exactly and that's like mm. what people get when they enter into it is that tagline and that's what they come for and then they stay for the law um, because I don't know anyone who's like gotten into 40k and hasn't in some way shape or form enjoyed some of the narrative that comes off the back of it um, because you have so many different channels you can go down you can go like if I just go orcs for instance you have you know all the Armageddon stuff you have the Beast of Rises Here's you have all I these other earlier. like little tangents but um, when it comes to all the other worlds, like Eldar and stuff, you have so many different, like, you know, craft worlds and their stories and all the different, like, interconnections that they have with all the special characters. Yeah, it's very characters. deep. Yeah, big time. I'm really surprised that other companies and things like that don't um, get in on it sooner. Like, I mean, things like Netflix could could um, jump on the opportunity and create a small series. And I'm sure loads of people would like it. Although, it's, yeah. again, we're back to talking about I mean, GW's IP and stuff like that. And it's a whole other that's, that's a whole other topic. They eh? literally <laughs> have their own streaming Let's not go that deep, guys. I don't think that but, they're going to pay out <laughs> Netflix anytime <laughs> soon. Uh, bring, bringing us back into the box set, though. Neil, you brought up the the fact that you spotted the, the old templates. I know. Well, the, yeah, people have told me that last templates have sat around in necromunda for a while but i oh man it's been ages what were they were, were they still around in seventh because i can remember them only like yes in fifth. i do were believe that they were at seventh yes yep big time i love because i came Just back the, I, to them with seven you know mm-hmm. it's that old classic war game this is a flamethrower this is a grenade this everyone in this area <sighs> gets exploded i i just loved it and like it was actually since I, I left at the start of 6th and I came back at midway through 8th, it was the first thing that I was just like, what? Where, where are all the templates? 
I mean, sure, you have arguments over yeah, them. Yeah, but... I mean, they were the main source of arguments, right? But it was yeah, so we've much spoken fun. about this before. I mean, it's such a weird point of contention because it's literally the thing that people would argue over the most. Mm-hmm. And it, apparently it's the funnest thing that everyone played <laughs> Look, with. So, like, if, if I don't they know, had just figured if, out a way to balance players it. just really like attacking other people. <laughs> just make um, it the defending but, yeah. player. Make it the defending player who figures out how many people are under the dish. And the that's worst it. part is the scatter dice. Because, I mean, if you don't roll the scatter dice exactly where you want the, the template to be, and it's really hard to line up the exact angle. And everyone always is like, no, you're, you're a fraction off. It actually missed me by <laughs> a millimeter. No, so annoying. See, I for one don't was appreciate fun. them only because I was an orc player. And it was like, oh, you have a bajillion boys under my flamethrower template. And I'm like, yeah, okay, awesome. Great. Look, you have I'm a marine totally under my happy hand to bring grenade. them back. <laughs> as as a marine player who plays with flamers, sir, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm totally happy to bring them back as long as Eldar get Eldritch Storm and they have that nine inch pie plate that hit and wounded everything on a two plus. I'm okay with that. <laughs> my God. <laughs> yeah, no, thank you. <laughs> Armor Bane, Flesh Bane, Warp Charge Four. How strange is that? Keep the Weird. baked goods in the kitchen. We don't need pie plates. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what is actually going to end up in this box, right? Is it is it going to be two sets of the dudes on feet and then a set of bugs and a set of bikes, or is or is I, it going I to do be believe it's like the the motorized, mechanized uh, looking dudes. Which Neil, you gotta kit bash those things into your gene stealer cults. Oh, everything in that box is going into my gene stealer cults. Literally oh, every single gene stealer cults. Where am I gonna put all these gene stealer? The studio is full of gene stealer cults, Neil. I know that's how they work. Are you space. telling me they've infested the studio? The genes. <laughs> it is a slow and steady process to convert every single model in the studio to eventually be GSC. Oh, okay. That'd be cool. GSC Wraith Knights? Yep, every single every single model. The whole thing. Crazy. Oh my god. <laughs> so what you get <laughs> in you the have box to purge here, them. You get um a no, you get two bikes, you get I think four bugs. Um you get uh, a whole bunch of the new Orlock guys. It's like House of Orlock Prospectors or whatever. And then you get a I'm sorry, bunch did someone of say Warlock? House of Iron close. <laughs> uh, you have get you get a full uh, gang of House of Iron dudes who are the Iron, and you, you know, get some fantastic dudes. looking terrain. The, the, Dude, that like, is pretty this funny. This is the thing they've they've gone from Mad Max style things. Like you had the um, that orc buggy with the garrote on the front that was literally Max out of Mad literally Max, literally with Mad the Max. fucking thing on his face uh, or the heckin thing on his face. Sorry, people that have you <laughs> the know, sensitive. Thing. <laughs> you, you can't walk it back <laughs> now. It wasn't me, be, by the yeah. way. <laughs> Look at this guy. Yeah. Look um, at this guy. But then now they've got the water world like domes from yeah, the, it, it's it, it, which, which was a Mad Max spin. I know Water World specifically, the Mad Max spinoff mixed oh, with the original Mad Max being set in like a sandy sort of desert. So they, I, like, I think if you, you mean an ash waste. <laughs> yeah, sorry. <laughs> uh, the ground is white, not yellow. Uh, but yeah, no, I- it's it's crazy. <laughs> They're just going through the movies, step by step through it. the eighties. Yeah, let them do it. Go nuts. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Next up is Judge Dredd. Have you? Let's. Um, have you not? Let, looked, let's looked around Sydney in the last little while. It is Waterworld. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> true. All right. That's a good point. Speaking of Waterworld, let's uh, let's head over to Harrow Deep. What a segue! Because uh, the oh. next Adopticon <laughs> release was actually, um, thank you. Uh, is the zombies? <laughs> We're getting zombies in Underworlds, man. Look, I feel I, like Underworlds has a lot of zombie teams. I, right? I mean, they they have they have what one zombie team? They're no. skeletons. They have skeletons. Can, and can they, have, they have the skeletons. They have the night haunts. Oh, yeah, I, I have the arcs. I want to talk about just just the the main dude who is the zombie master is the quite clearly a House de Lac model that's been resculpted. Well, to me, it looks like a mages. Isn't I cannot that a mages? unsee it. I cannot unsee it. Absolutely, no, it's I a House de Lac color, dude. The pose, the pose is ex- almost exactly the same. The arm is just slightly different. 
And then, of course, he's got the little handy pauldrons. But it is the house. What if you want to call them Delacue? I'm going to call them Delac. But well, they yeah. Delac any sort of creativity when it comes to these models, <laughs> am I right? <laughs> um, Matt's expecting. Issue, yeah, my, my big issue with this model is the like sealed over mouth. Is it's just it? I don't know. There's. I think it was from like some movie I watched when I was too young as a kid. But like that. Like skin covered mouth and someone's like screaming underneath it always throws me off big time. Oh man, yeah, that's, that's, that's Matrix creepy. when they yeah. when they removed his mouth. I don't oh. know. I don't. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it, it might have even been like I don't know, like a Buffy the Vampire Slayer episode from when I there's, was a real. There's real also young. one in um, there's one in a in an X Men movie. I'm pretty sure where Ryan Reynolds plays Deadpool. Oh yeah. That's... Um, and his mouth oh, is no. sewn shut. I, yeah, we I don't mean, talk about that. We don't that, talk Deadpool. about that. Yeah, right. That pool is yeah. that pool is dead to everybody. Yeah, it it definitely feels like even with the zombies though, in this the kit, original Bruno, um, <laughs> that they've gotten really for Frankenstein with like the yeah. the coils and the, the, the monstrosity. The there's, like oh, yeah. there's a random dude in armor. Like yeah, got, and one of them's missing an eye. Like you've got hmm. like four of them or five of them with the electrodes sticking out of them. And then there's just He's, a guy in armor with um, a halberd. Well, I mean, usually the the war bands tend to have like your leader, uh, a champion of sorts, someone who can do, dish out a bit more damage, and then and a then whole bunch of random plebeians. Yeah, yeah, people that go out either grab objectives or die so that other people don't. I mean, the whole I point of this so, guy is I'm, it's meant to be electricity. And he's just like sparking them back to life. And every time he casts a spell or something, they all just jump back to life because the electricity up. comes out of his staff and brings him back to life. Mm-hmm. So. Underworlds, funnily enough, has a lot of ghoul teams, right? Yeah. Is there not like four or five teams that are that's all That's what like we were saying. Like there's some skeletons. Kind of teams, yeah. Skeletons, Night Haunt, Ossiarch Bone Reapers, Flesh Eater Quartz, and now the zombies. The, they have yeah, two, they're two, all two like flavors of Night Haunt as well. Oh, is there? Oh yeah, yeah because they technically made the the mourn flight or whatever it's called. Yeah, it's literally just four um, wraiths. I think they also did that with the glaive wraith stalkers, the the horsehead dudes. Oh, they did, didn't they? It was like a starter that's set just, with them. Oh, that, that's us talking about them lacking in <laughs> creativity. Creativity once again. Literally <laughs> recycling <laughs> models. De lacking. Yeah, they literally are. De lacking. But that being said, I am pretty excited about seeing more Harrowdeep stuff. I am keen for what's next. I don't... This thing doesn't really spark joy. Um, <laughs> they just... Then you thank like, it for what it is and you put it away. Yeah, like, in well, terms of how this maybe that's why they did it first. Sorry, what was that? Maybe that's why they did it first, because it's like, okay, well, there's a whole new edition and then here's another ghoul team. This is like the fifth... It's not exactly the most exciting, but there's more coming. This is like the fifth unit from Harrowdeep. Like, the fifth army. Look, I'm just... Fifth team. I'm just looking for the, the next oh, Fire it? Slayers team, yeah. you know? Oh. <laughs> yeah. Hugh Grimnir is brilliant. doing it for you? They left me hanging. <laughs> 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 Alright, yeah. let's let's move on. Yeah. The next up, I'm actually to. pretty excited about this, man. Is the first off, the two new knights coming in for Chaos Knights Hell and yeah. the codexes being released for Chaos and Imperial Knights. I yeah, just make sense for them to real do them fast. both at the same time. Yeah. I thought that Nids were going to come out and then it, there would be a little bit of a gap, but Nids weren't even out and these guys were released. So, can we talk, these are can real we talk soon. about some of the stuff on this, on the photos? Like, so the Armager with a missile, tiny missile pods on the top, that's new. Yeah. I mean, it's like yep, that. yeah, that's man. new. And then the coils are new. The claw is new. The oh, one of them is now the a dog psycho. head. Like, yeah. it's horrifying and awesome. One's now and a spiker. Spike. Yes. The I like giant the, the, mammoth the, knight. The giant mammoth knight with tentacle arm, whip arms. Oh, and the Before, carrion birds. You it's used to be able to make an imperial knight a psyker, but they, I'm pretty sure they could only cast smite in the game. And this is going to be the first actual real psyker knight. And I'm pretty sure it's what, only for chaos? Really? Um, yes, yes. Because it's chaos corrupted, it's like a demon engine. Are you sure it's got those fancy bird vultures? A psycho? Yes, it is, and it's a psycho. There you go. 
Mm-hmm. That's unreal. This thing is crazy. I'm actually very scared uh, to see this and I mean, to see like what kind of dent is we're gonna see. I, I do Psychic love the Knight? mammoth horns, but the the random tail club tail is a bit of a weird. I touch. like the tail. You mean you the reckon? tentacles? No, the tail. Oh, the club oh, tail. tail. Yes. No way. It, it reminds yeah, me yeah, of that dinosaur tail. Is that dinosaur? Yeah. Sort of like I like it. The tail. It around. looks more like like um, pink kylosaurus. Uh, mm. Well, I mean, yeah, dinosaur, but it looks more like dynamic. Because before, to me, they just look like giant turtles, and, like very slow. So I see no issues with giant turtles. It is now less of a giant turtle. Like, what are you? What yeah, are you to say? because if anything, it looks more like a beast <laughs> that would like run, and its tail would like lift. Or if it gets knocked back, it has its tail to lean back on. Turtles can run. Is a t- turtle not <laughs> a beast as well? So, do you? Here's a question: Do you think? The sculptors came up with the sculpt and then handed it to the rules team and said, figure out rules for this. Or do you think the rules team came up with a bunch of weapons and said to the sculptor team, make this work? It's always the sculptor team I reckon team they first. went... Yeah. Yeah. I, I reckon. Yeah. Is it really? I, I would have said Maybe if anything, around. the rules team went, we need a psychic knight. And they were like, what's psychic like uh, tentacle monsters? And then they made a tendril hand. I mean, I thought they... I don't know about you, but I got like the the shaman kind of vibes, especially with yeah. the tusks, like that kind of like yeah, the birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The birds are what sold the like, shaman style thing for me. Yeah, yeah. It just feels more animalistic, more primal. Hmm. Also, its gun looks devilishly similar to the forge fiend. Yeah, it that's, does. That's, that's it does. a plasma cannon. That's a is it is it chaos the same? plasma cannon? Is it the exact? Pretty much, same it's got though? the same teeth on the front. Yeah, exactly. It just has coils mm. on both sides instead and no eye on the side that we can yeah. see. It might actually. Now, mm. Jackson, I do mm. believe we have knights being painted yes. on the yes. channel. Thanks to um, our lovely friend Jimmy, who is an absolute legend. He has uh, uh, given us his knights. Um, the only caveat was that I have to paint them, uh, <laughs> which has taken a while. Knights, do not underestimate them are massive and they take way longer than you think even if they are a lot of transfers <laughs> they take a while uh, i'm nearly there they're nearly done but they are imperial knights they're not chaos knights however we may have access to another chaos knights army as well Ooh. so Ooh. yes um with potentially some of the new knights depending on uh the person in question painting said knights <laughs> But so, yeah, we'll definitely be getting out. normal knights on, and maybe <laughs> using them as chaos knights as well, or yeah. getting a chaos knights army. Hundred percent, man. <laughs> I, I'd be keen. I mean, we we know, we know at least like a guy who has a bunch of chaos knights. <laughs> at least one. I think we're all thinking about the same guy. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Hmm. Yeah, but it depends, and I don't think a lot of us actually play knights really. I mean, Dude, none of us I, actually I would play knights. If it yeah. wasn't like so awful to play against at lower point levels. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, they're such just such a weird army because they're so different to any other army in the game. I mean, any other army has things that are small or big, or transports or like it, you know some some form of normal army style. These guys are just so strange that you either bring big a, mechs. enough. Yeah, enough anti-tank to kill them all and then you win, or no anti-tank and you get rolled every game. Yep, or you bring half and half and have half a useless army. <laughs> well, I think um, when it comes to ninth and 8th edition as well, the fact that things can now wound anything is, I guess, a detriment yeah, exactly. to the larger vehicles like this. I reckon they need ways to take more damage from small arms fire and less damage from big fire. To show that they have like a really strong force field thing against a massive laser cannon, for example. But, but how would you how would you write a rule for that? Uh, it's you almost like as if field the thing, Necrons, like one. yeah, had, had one like that, exactly like that. So yeah, but now now that everything is so much more killy, those rules don't really apply because it's just like uh if we make them transhuman. They're already T eight, so anything that is strength nine or higher only wins them on a four. I'm talking about like. If anything shoots them with a damage of more than three, like D3 plus three or something, they halve damage or something like that. Halve damage? Yeah, exactly. And then anything else, 
anything that is one damage should be like plus one to wound, and it should be inbuilt onto their profile. That's or plus one to hit and wound. But that that doesn't make sense, you know. Like they're a big ass tank, like walking mech. They're designed. Yeah, to stomp they're not on. weak to small arms fire. Yeah, they should. No, be. they're not. But imagine they're the only thing on the battlefield. There's nothing else going on. There's no foot soldiers. Anyone who shows up is going to be like, "There's a giant target in my face. How could I possibly miss?" What I anything reckon they that should I shoot do, is going to hit this. There thing. might be plus one to hit, but mine, plus one to wound. Yeah. yeah, that's just to make it so that the rest of your army actually does something. See, so that you I, don't I have would, to bring all anti-tank to kill a knight's army. You can still have a good an, chance at it. I would put in like a limit. Like you can only run this number of big knights at this point level. Yeah. Um, so then you're forced to bring the smaller ones, which are more susceptible to the small arms fire. Yeah, yeah that could be good mm. too. But then it kind of limits the way that you want to play your things. Like I mean, if you like the big boy knights, then... It's yeah, unfair I mean, to force people into playing. No one's Workshop stopping you from playing is, open play. They're, they're not imposed. They're, they're not um, unlikely to impose some re- like restrictions on how you can build your army because they did that to the orcs. Mm-hmm. They got rid of the buggies. Yeah, I'm. Yep. I'm pretty glad that they're releasing both of these codexes at once because the the sooner they get all these codexes out, the better we're gonna have like a nice even playing field. Yeah. You know, I was I was talking to Jimmy about this as well. Um, cause he also plays guard and, uh, and I was saying, oh yeah, these, these will be coming out right after nids. And then the only other codex you have left is, um, the chaos Marines book and demons and chaos Marines have already been confirmed after this. And then it just has to be demons. And he's like, yeah. And guard. And I was like, oh yeah, God, for God's sake, existed. Had a codex the, since the first beginning book of that was edition. ever released in eighth edition, and is still going to be like last, but literally no. like five and a half years or something without hey, a book. It, it might be good. The fact that um, they're going to be at the end of, like, quote unquote, the end of ninth edition in terms of their book, um, that might that's going to give them the best possible chance of being like competitive, especially after such a long period of time of yeah exactly and then i don't know what they'll do after that maybe they'll start releasing some like war zone stuff like they did with um psychic awakening and Uh, space marine codex 2 electric boogaloo we were talking about turtles before but this has literally been a turtle version of a codex crate for them trying Mm -hmm. to come along and catch up (laughs) yeah it is yeah i'm so sorry for you guard players you got absolutely destroyed (laughs) So not fair. Speaking of turtles and other beasts, Age of Sigmar, my guys. Segway? We're heading into the realm of beasts. Ooh. Oh, wait, no, like no, no. You skipped, over, you skipped over the uh, amazing conversion kit that is the Blood Bowl box yes. that's coming out for well, the North look, team. <laughs> look, man, they look like tall dwarves to me. They do, but there are at least two Space Wolf uh, marines in that box set and you have two adorable little pigs with barrels attached to them Let's that will make amazing bomb squeaks i'm terribly sorry to all the people who actually play but blood bowl none of us play blood bowl, what is blood bowl? we do have uh, jack bowl? who will come on eventually we'll and talk about blood bowl he's a big fan no, we'll Look, um, I'd be keen. but for now That's they're a conversion happen. kit for 40k nothing you said <laughs> is true <laughs> <laughs> look i'd be keen to play blood bowl but like we don't play blood bowl no one else plays blood bowl I'm the only one who sits here and goes, it's, football. Let's never use <laughs> yeah, the word football. football. Yeah. It is a bit of a strange uh, connection because I feel like a lot of nerds and stuff that play 40K or Sigma, whatever, they don't, they're not into sports. So it's, it's like a the strange... Get, yeah, sign me up, man. I was NFL, watching sports all and the nerds minis. are into NFL, except for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a stats game. <laughs> Sorry, um, I didn't catch what you were saying, Neil. I was saying, let's never talk about Blood Bowl again and move on with our lives. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, moving beasts. on with our lives. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Realm of Beasts, guys. Look, new terrain, new endless spell. Uh, this looks real exciting. So um, what I find I'm... interesting about this is that they've taken a model that existed for Forge World, which was the um, Beast Incarnate, which was basically a the magic of beasts awakened into a model and it was like a creature of living beast energy they've done the exact Mm -hmm. same thing but they've flipped it on its head and made it like a huge amber crystal that's keeping this thing alive and that is this origin of this beast energy now so i reckon people could run their beast incarnate as this new new unit 
Oh yeah, yeah 100%. for those three people that have a beast incarnate, you could totally run this <laughs> as that thing. It's it's cold as an incarnate, so why wouldn't you be able to? Yeah, no, exactly. Well, I mean, uh, they do have um, for it, but still, coming from the the RPG side of things, um, there was a lot of heavy emphasis on realm stones and um, specific gems of power. So I'm actually really excited to see the fact that that's being kind of implemented more in the war game, like visibly. Um, I I honestly just think it looks wicked. Um, as a, a kid who loved dinosaur bones, um, <laughs> it's just you know Jurassic Park. It's awesome. The thing that that's interesting for me and trying to keep it as PG as possible is that when they were showing this on the stream, there was a. Uh, there's a lot of hilarious reactions, especially from 40k players who are like, oh, wow, you guys, you Sigma players waited a long time for this piece of terrain kit. Lol. <laughs> <laughs> you just get pieces of terrain as your release? How embarrassing. But look, I think they're pretty cool. I and mean, more, more terrain is always welcome. It also, it also co- uh, coincides with the season of war. So I reckon that's like Nuckman, right? Like... Mm. New season book, yeah, yeah, yeah. new new war like they're trying to pump new, something uh, out every what is it three months or six months? Mm. Three months, I think. Three months. I, I feel reckon like it's a good pathway little... to go down to choose each of the realms and then choose and then have pieces of terrain and endless spells for that set, and then mm-hmm. cycle and repeat because I'd like to see some other things like the realm of life. Well, I mean, or realm it, of it's shadow. Following, or um, it's following the like the main overarching plot. <laughs> So it's kind of like, oh, uh, just like in 40k, how like we're in Vigilus all of a sudden, so now Warzone Nakmund is the big book. Um, in Sigmar, right now we're in the, the era of the Beast, so like we're in the realm of Beast, we're in Gur. Everything is like all about the the Amber. Mm. Amber Stone. Gotta love that Amber Stone. Mm-hmm. Fran, I don't know where you went, but you totally missed out on Octarius right in between Vigilus and Nakmund, my friend. <laughs> just I mean, skip no, no, an I'm entire saying, I'm saying section how, Nakmund and Vigilus are actually the same place. Are Nakmund, they? Yeah, Nakmund is there just a go. specific area in Vigilus. Shows how much I know, you know guys. Nothing. I'm not there a little person. You <laughs> didn't have Eldar in its name, so... You just yeah. got so embarrassed just then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look, Look, I'm man. going off the books and their release order, okay? I don't read the thing. I, got, I can't read, You can okay? talk round Look, and Look, if round. you wanted me to say it, I can't read, guys. You I can just talk me round and round in circles about the rules, sir, but when it comes to the lore... <laughs> That's why I'm here, brother. Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. I concede to you. <laughs> All right. Speaking of so, which, that that awesome like little waterfall thing is awesome. That like staircase yeah. into a waterfall. That's it, the second waterfall thing they've done. Yeah. The yeah. First there was, was the other waterfall elf, thing. Uh, model. The yeah, Lumineth the, terrain. The Lumineth mm-hmm. stuff. Yeah. This one they've just trained. I just down. think it looks cool. I just think they're neat. <laughs> <laughs> um. Speaking of neat. <laughs> yeah, speaking uh, of Sigma as well. The uh, Ulrac we, is something that's really sort of just brightened your eyes, yeah, and I would understand, Mr. The Sutherland what? Nighthaunt. All, so he's the, the new model for um, Nighthaunt, has been yeah. announced. And he's okay. literally that ferryman of the souls. Yeah, um, from what, Elden Ring? From anything <laughs> ever. <laughs> Um, that's mythology? another thing when the stream was going everyone <laughs> like, was like oh my god i just beat that guy in elden ring wow <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh man yeah. i think this um, is cool i think this model is sick as yeah, as the man. kids say it's so dynamic I'm, i mean I'm just he's literally the riding a boat and it still looks dynamic yeah. yeah i mean he's just standing there but like it's got all the souls coming around it the gravestones yeah. it's just it's mint. It's like it is floating very exa- well. The sculpt is beautiful in terms of how mm-hmm. they haven't to really done the illusion of having it off the ground. Yeah, yeah. They haven't really done a whole lot of boats in the past. I mean, they did that boat with like a crashed ship the, for um, the Ideneth, which is also for a the sculpt Ideneth. I really like. And then ages ago, they actually had um, Dreadfleet, which was like that box set that we have actually. And it had a floating ghost ship in it, but it's literally just floating wood with like a little flying stand thing. And it's yeah. not particularly exciting. This it shows you how so far we've come, better right? In like in sculpting. Yeah. Um, and yeah, exactly. Look, I, I can say like 
um, ever since we've gone into second, uh, third edition Sigmar, there's actually quite a few characters for the Night Hunt that are no longer available. I'm, um, I, I'm really? looking at the models on, for the, the game Dreadfleet, and holy cow. They were, they're beautiful. They yeah. They're really nice models. Yeah, and they're aged as well. They're old now. Yeah, they mm-hmm. are sweet, sweet models. Let's get them Yeah. Over. The water, they did the water really well. Why don't we do... But they're uh, quite small. Well, why don't we do a, a mighty little battle report of Dreadfeet? Yes, well, we, we, we absolutely can. We have to paint up all the minis that came in that oh, little box set. Dude, that. just send them over to me. I'll paint up ships all day. All just right, too so easy. Will, it'll be really, really quickly done. Yeah, <laughs> I'm just going to bring this guy and then, like... Are they, um, all, are they all plastic as well? They are yeah. all plastic. That's wicked. Yeah, very yeah. friendly done for all plastic models and you know what's weird they came with a base mat and you know what the base mat is made out of Mm -hmm. styrofoam silk silk Ooh. yeah like a pretty sure it's silk interesting it's like a really really nice custom mat that explains Mm -hmm. why it's so expensive to buy this is and this is in the studio it is in the studio oh man yeah now before we go any further with Dreadfleet, I didn't realize that would be such a massive point. I wanted to ask Ron, are you going to be, are you going to get that new box set that came out with Night Haunt? Dude, I really, really want to, but I also can probably find the model somewhere else for cheaper. <laughs> Come on, go halfsies with me. I'm going to totally get the uh, Daughters of Cain side, the Daughters of Cain army in house. Is yet to be painted at all. But I am collecting them all. I'm building them all up, and I hope to paint them all in one batch painting session. Ooh. It's um, like besides yeah. besides the guy with the the floating guy with the ledger and the crossbowman, I can probably find, especially due to second edition Sigmar. Yeah, you could probably find every other thing for half price. Yep, it's Almost just. Guaranteed. It's a very difficult box to sell, honestly. Yeah, it is. Especially yeah. before the battle term comes out, because Night Haunt is probably the only army that my glimpse spike gets are better than, by and by. Like they're <laughs> they're absolutely garbage shit. Like they are probably the Dude, lowest ranking army of all time. I Even think everything in the army, everything in the army minus like characters, is one wound. Um, yep. And there's, I think there's a specific type of unit or besides hex rates of course because they're cavalry yeah. Yeah. um but there's only like a handful of units with more than a wound and then even the characters are like not as many wounds as other characters what about those huge chariots like the the engine the black coach no 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 the mortis engine mortis engines uh um, yes I- they're awesome. I do a believe giant they're, in, uh, they're in cage. So- they're in Soulblight Grave Lord. They're in Soulblight Grave Lord. Oh, it's there are not a few the same versions thing. of it. So there might be a no. Nighthaunt version of it, it as well. Wow. In, uh, in Nighthaunt, it's only the Black Coach. That's their oh. vehicle. Interesting. It's just a carriage go. with a dead guy on it. And that dead yeah. guy is well, also a vampire, a classic by the model. way. Back yeah, when I mean, Fantasy existed, <laughs> that was crazy, that model. It, like, destroyed everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, now... I, uh, I feel like the the game's changed. But the big problem well, with I'm, Nighthaunt is the fact that they were all about their unchangeable save. And now this version of Sigmar is all about save stacking, where you just put all these plus ones to your saves on things to negate yeah. rent, which they can't the do. Entire army, <laughs> the entire army can't take all-out defense. Yeah. It yeah. just doesn't work. It's, it's just they used them. to have a rule called Ethereal, where you could only ever hit them on a six. Well, the Ethereal rule... Um, is what is it? Can't modify their rent. Yeah, uh, positive or, or negative. It is just their save. Yeah, it's and always a four plus right. or a five plus. Yeah. yeah. Weird. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But anyway. like, uh, is there anything on the on the daughters of Cain side that you're actually very keen on? I mean, yes. I mean, everything in that box set is perfect for me because I don't really have any. I have twenty witches now. Um, I only have five Kinray. I have no Doomfire Warlocks, and of course, I do not have the new Whip character, which is which. called the called heck, the witch. something the dark something elder character. Uh, the no. gladi- <laughs> it's gl- not a succubus. Gladiatrix. I, gladiatrix. Yeah. Yes. Crazy. I have no idea what they do, but I'm keen. 
the, obviously this means that uh, I actually think that'll be everything from the entire range now in the Daughters of Cain in House Army. Oh, actually, aside from those spooky, spooky boys, um, the not the Doom Fire Warlocks. There are some other weird ethereal little thing that most pe- a lot of people buy them for the Eldar conversions, um, and they come in their own little box set, and they have a Warcry box set as well. But uh, yes, I will be absolutely picking up that side of the Arena of Shades. Can I just say because oh, I'm king. The, I love the Warcry box sets, just for yes. the as base models for other things, just like Necromunda Warcry those those units to turn into troops or whatever else you're doing with them. Yeah, I literally just bought fodder. two of them. They're, Four they're Daughters of Cain, because so they came fun. with the snakes and the, the witches as well. It's mm-hmm. literally perfect. Oh, you, do, so I don't believe you have the Daughters of Cain Warcry team. The... The shadowy, you know, spectry people. What, Morgwaith? Are you talking the underworld stuff? Or the... No, no, the, there's a... The um, shadowy people. There is a specific Warcry team for Daughters of Cain. Yeah, 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 I don't have them. Yeah, they look I wicked as well. Uh, they're the only unit in the entire book that I will not have once I get the Arena of Shades. No, oh, soon. Yeah, soon. Yes, including all the characters. I've got one of every character. It's insane. Now, uh, Neil, you don't know too much about this, but uh, we have a bit of a group chat, and every time I finish a Horus Heresy book. <laughs> I rank it. Oh, yes, okay. And I am 29 books in. Okay. Is it just getting worse and worse as you go along? It is no. still very fun. Yeah. There's no Eldar, so it's it was bad to begin with, really. There's plenty of Eldar. They just all somewhere. die at the hands of superior species. Yeah. No, 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 no. I don't know what you're talking about. Have you read the Fulgrim book? <laughs> <laughs> But he gets he tears a rifle to shreds. On the topic of that, yes, we're getting a whole new edition <gasps> of the Horus Heresy. <gasps> it looks so cool that trailer, dude. What can I say about that model that they showed? The, that true scale, the, the beaky. true scale beaky. Yeah, they grabbed him by his head and they made him just that they bit just taller. They stretched him. <laughs> <Just> <laughs> You could hear the the uh, the ceramite <laughs> groaning as they pull him <laughs> upwards. But boy, he looks so to scale. It's like weird. It is very strange because I have a lot of beakies. I have a lot of rogue trader plastic beakies, which oh my is God. which is what they had before the first and second edition pewter beakies. So we're oh. talking very, very old, minimal detail, virtually no detail, in fact, um, Road Trader Beakies. And they are squat. I would say how. They are mm. very Like, how big. do you have these? But um, it's Neil, so I'm not surprised. Yeah, he knows yeah. guys. Uh, if someone guys. <laughs> if, if you know who to hook up with, then... Anyway, my point being, if you're willing to, if you're willing to abuse, if you're willing to, if you're willing to let someone else abuse your body, you too can have little rogue trader beakies. But they're tiny. These things are sound very, like very small. Trader. Now, when he's saying yeah, beakies, yeah. by the way, for those who don't know, because I don't really understand. So that's either. the the Corvus it's pattern the, helmet with like the yeah, the pointy beak helmet. The marine helmet yeah. with the pointy beak. It looked like a giant bird not to be confused with any other helmet that might be confused as beaky yeah <laughs> that's the mark six uh power armor so you yes. get all the studs Here on the shoulder pad the corvus pattern yeah you get the toes on the on the boots as yep. well of course no. this is made for walking but you know why? how you guys are talking about stretching him out did it, did anyone notice that in the trailer the guy that um horace impales with his claws is like really short he's like a He's very stubby. And then he, like, the guy that he drags along the ground. He's very he's stubby. stubby. Head to a Primark? Pr- the Primark I mean, is Primarchs. big, that's all. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no, he just looks wide. He looks, like, very stubby. Which means they like did the it to the models. proper scale back in the Horus Heresy. <laughs> and then as yes. Frail Born Marines all last, made in landscape. <laughs> he was the last one uh, before the new release came out. They just had to kill him off. So that the new <laughs> true scale beakies could, could yeah. come to the scene. You're the last right. guy before I put all of the rest of them on on that rack and i stretch them out 
<laughs> yeah. Actually, they also showed a plastic Praetor model, which... Mr. Double I don't know about you guys. Yeah, Mr. Double White. <laughs> um, I don't know about you guys. The first thing I thought as soon as I saw him was... White Scar? White Scar? I don't, really? I don't know why. I thought Chaos Lord. Death Guard? I, I don't know why. This it's just got like, a man. He looks side. like... <laughs> I mean, it's an axe. Yeah, he's one of the it's slowest axe, looking yeah. marines I've ever seen from. Yeah. Why would you think White Scars? He doesn't have a bike. I don't know. He just... <laughs> yes, because they're all born in the saddle. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they never what leave I, the saddle. What I find really interesting about this is the Aquilas. Because Aquilas weren't supposed to be a thing that most heresy um, armies featured because they really only brought them into... Um, I guess, forefront when the uh, Emperor's children already fell because they were supposed to be the only ones that wore the Aquila. That was like their gift from the Emperor as Emperor's oh. children to wear the Aquila. Yeah. But having the Aquila on his like standard on the back and having it sort of imprinted on the blade is either like this guy should not be one of the Heresy Marines and he's painted as, this, you know, Sons of Horus, so it doesn't really make I, a lot reckon, of sense. I reckon it's so that he can be painted either way. Yeah. And brought into 40k. Yes. Except for, of course, salamanders. Because I've never met a salamander with a top knot. <laughs> they usually <laughs> burn off pretty quick. Mm hmm. You got loose hair. Yeah, you gotta tie that I mean, in you the could bun, just man. Snip that little part off. <laughs> mm-hmm. You gotta have I, a, uh, hair the cooking hair net. I didn't yeah. even notice the top knot. I thought his hair just kind of stopped and that was part of the thing at the top. Mm. The banner, yeah. Now I can you guys reckon I could rock uh, a, a top beard. knot like that? <laughs> Yep. Exactly, <laughs> a giant beady skull hanging there off the rail, and I—I I mean, what I want—I want people's thoughts on in the comments if if anyone's sort of happy to. But like, there's a on the Beaky Marine further up on his left thigh, as you run down the center, it looks like someone that was sort of prepping this for the shot before they painted it up had a bad accident when trying to remove a mold line, and there's like a jagged edge. And it goes down the middle of his thigh. Does anyone else see that? Middle I of don't his see thigh. what you're talking about. I have no idea. Middle of his thigh. Yeah, middle yeah. of his, mm. his Stop left thigh. Stop staring at yeah. this beaky's groin, it, please. You let me know, viewers. I think <laughs> I, I, I admire Matt for your bullish belief that anyone's going to be listening to our first podcast. I think that's of course. fantastic. Yes. Mate, if, if, you, if you make it, they will come, and then they will stare at a rogue trader marine growing for, for 30 scene. minutes looking for it <laughs> yes. for a scene <laughs> but that being um, said yeah does this make you guys want to get horus heresy no but i've already got horus heresy marines my dark angels yeah. were either painted green black or white and the black and white marines can be used for both so i'm happy look matt i i feel very keen on some sons of horus in the near future we'll see how the edition looks like yeah um whether or not they're sticking with the old format or they're going to try to make it like an 8th edition I can almost guarantee change. it'll be like 8th edition. Only because the original Horror series that came out came out alongside 7th and it was basically the exact same as the 7th rule set. And I imagine them doing the exact same for this re- revamp of the Heresy. That's fair enough. Ferran, what it does make me keen to do is try and get my hair in a fancy top knot like that man there. Yeah. You can only do that on if you stream. run if you I reckon run I could him. do that. If you don't run him, then what's the point? <laughs> I think we should get you in full cosplay, actually. Yeah, in yeah. full power armor. As full a space might take a couple of years as to build. As we all know, Jackson's favorite army. Space Marines. Yes, Space, space Marines. Marines. Yes. Look, if I come out dressed as like a howling banshee, that would, I reckon that'd be pretty nice. You Dude, know? I would the be repulsed. That too. I'd be yeah. questioning the boot plate, but you yeah. know, you do you. And the belly button hole. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Yeah, the belly button hole that Matt loves so much I on that hate James that model so much. All of the <laughs> Jack, I would be seeing far oh. too much of you. You'd never see me again. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Actually, speaking of Eldar, you guys are getting pre-orders on your new Avatar of Cain and your Autarchs and all this stuff. Jack, Yay! Can we talk They're about the price here. of these before we get into the models? Yeah, let me. I'll go through some prices with you, okay? And you can tell me what you think. So, Too much. I did. Oh, wait, a sorry, little, I, I, did a, <laughs> I did a bit of math. 
And this is all going to be in AUD, of, well, yep. uh, of course. Of as course. Well. Australian dollar for those Americans and everyone else who are watching yeah. us. Well, all that you um, need to know is it's too damn high. Yes, um, it's insanely pricey. Um, so the, the first thing I will mention is the box set that you get, the Combat Patrol, the Aldari Combat Patrol. That's like 210 now. That's um, AUD. about the same as the other box sets. A little bit more well, the, the price the, you're saying, right? Because, because the price of the Guardians is now... <laughs> insanely high guardians are now i think 90 90 dollars for 10 what, what? um yep nine dollars oh you gotta hate yeah the, a model. the <laughs> if you were to buy everything in this box set separately it would be 330 dollars so, and this is only 210 so oh hmm, you're getting saves. 120 dollars off which is insane yep yeah. oh my god Thank you for that one that's crazy right. yep um and out of the five new uh, things up for pre-order uh, in, at this po- uh, moment in time, um, and I'm not counting the box as one of them, um, then three of them are actually more expensive in dollars than they are in points in the game. <laughs> Just, it's crazy. Well, please tell me uh, the, the Avatar is not one of them. No, the Avatar is actually very reasonably priced. It's only 165 which is pretty good. That's um, all right. In Australian dollars, in case anyone else had yep. a heart attack. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Compared yeah. to something like Marathi, who's 230 still, and she's about the same size. Mm-hmm. It's pretty good. Um, I mean, though, Robert uh, Gilliman is 100 infantry. bucks, so like... Robert Gilliman. Yeah. <laughs> on him for his... He's 105 the robot what gorilla man. The, the wraith knight is still 125, and it's literally double the size. So, what is it? Yeah, I don't, I don't really understand. But anyway, which one? Um, all the infantry, I'll just rattle off for you because they're very expensive. Rangers, five of them are now a hundred dollars. What? Oh, um, 20 bucks a model. Uh, yeah, yeah. The the Autark is 66. Uh, Shining spears are 105 for three of them. Ugh. Shroud runners are even more at 110 for three. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Reapers are $100 for five. Warlocks are $90 for two. Banshees are $90 for five. Um, and Malgan Ra is a 77 for one individual baby character on a 40 mil base. <sighs> and then the dice you can get are $66 redos. Yes, Jeez. those dice, man. It takes real commitment to buy them. Um, yep. I can't believe that you the do get... is cheaper than two Warlocks. Yeah, dude, you do get one hell of an army, though. Like, we've seen over the past, like, how many bat reps? Oh, yeah. It's like, kicking ass. It's doing it's doing work, uh, that's for sure. Um, I don't really know if it's actually taken any um, competitive placings um, as pure craft worlds recently. I've I know heard that Harlequins have been doing yeah. insane. I'll have a look. Um, compared to Tau and Custodes, which are the flavor of the month. Mm-hmm. Um but yeah, the models are certainly cool. I like the fact that they kept all the original sculpts and things and updated them. But my gosh, they are expensive. I will be sticking to my fail cast models. Thank you kindly. At least they were only 63 for five of them. And they're still only on 28 mil bases. They're absolutely tiny. You know why uh, I reckon so. that the Swooping Hawks are going to get FAQ'd pretty early on for these? Is because oh, yes. is because they aren't one of the new units that have come out, and if people are going to start buying those at the cheaper price point, they're not going to be happy about that when they can be trying to I don't know move some dark reapers at twenty dollars a model instead, or some mm. rangers at twenty dollars a model. So they're going to probably buff well, these guys and enough, drop the swooping I, hawks. I thought that um, swooping hawks along with um, Baharath would be the talking point because they are pretty insane. Um, most people have been running Karandrus, the Scorpion, and um, Azurman, the Avenger, and a bunch of Dire Avengers because their guns are now ridiculous, um, and they're pretty cheap for what they do. Um, and Jane Zar, I thought, would be great as well because she can't be shot. She can't really be psychic because you've got a load of psychic defense as well. Um, and you can only fight her in combat, and even then she makes everything around her all units around I, her fight. I'm so last, glad so. to hear yeah. good things about Jane Zar because that model was so cool when it came out. Oh, and yeah. so underwhelming. Especially the belly button. That's definitely my favorite part. All right, okay. you're gonna make me move button. on with that. All right, all right, 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 right. You, you you asked the question. You or you said you don't know how well Eldari have been going 
In. Oh, yes. Okay, so I just so had a very quick look yeah. at the latest Goonhammer article. So, okay. first event, finals, Aldari versus Asuriani. All right. So, Eldars versus Eldars. All right. Then the next event, uh, Asuriani versus Harlequins. Uh, then uh, uh, Elves came third as well. Uh, the next one was... Elves came third. Oh, Custodes versus Orcs, so we can just skip past that one. We don't have to talk about that ever again. Uh, then, okay. Har- <laughs> then Harlequins took down the yep. next one. Yeah. Um, Custodes versus... Uh, Are there stats for these? Or? Yeah, no, just have a quick look. Then the, then the Birmingham was Harlequins versus Eldari in the finals. Oh, this is all these, all all the these finals are finals. You're talking all about. these all are the finals. final games. Oh, we're then, seeing then, a lot of Eldari. Then Copenhagen yeah, 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 yeah. Hammer was Harlequin versus yeah. Tau in the finals. Yeah. And yeah, Harlequin versus Orcs elsewhere. Can I say France. it is lovely to hear so many Xenos? Oh my yes. goodness. The best yeah, fact. So Harlequin and, <laughs> and Elves were everywhere absolutely everywhere Varan, i don't know if you're gonna uh throw up pictures on top of this podcast but if you are there is a lovely meme of everyone running these nine void weavers at the moment from harlequins that's the talking point of competitive players these nine void weavers um and frankly i don't really understand why because everyone seems to be running nine of them along with like four boats and then you just basically spam boats everywhere but i think that the army itself would lose out to mass amounts of bodies that have obsec because nothing in the list aside from the troops has obsec and they're also not really that hard to take down in combat they are fast and they have quite a bit of shooting on them um, especially against harder targets but against loads of weaker targets and things that either move fast or just take objectives like orc boys that to jump everywhere or nids that are coming out that have tons and tons of um gaunts everywhere they're just gonna get rolled oh these these, they just, these harlequin, I don't know. These harlequin uh, builds look like they're running at least five units of troops and then there's yeah but the troops are only really squished they're only weavers. they're only t3 they're only one wound they have no defense against anything other than a four up in bond um they are minus one to wound um when they're near a shadow seer but that's only when you're near a Shadow Seer, um, which is not all the time, especially because they move really fast. And yet um, somehow and they're in almost every single finals. Yeah, it's because of all the Void Weavers everyone's running. They're just basically playing the long game. You sit at the back of the board, you become unkillable, um, you shoot everyone off the board, and then you just take all the objectives on turn four and five. Um, and that's Can just I the say- way they go. That does not seem like a very fun way to play this game. No, I guarantee Agreed. it isn't. Man. Yeah. The, no. I don't know how, how people get the kicks around the comps. Um, I'll be very honest. I'm not a very competitive player, so like, my fun comes from the spectacle when you see something stupid happen and everyone has a big laugh about it. So whenever I <laughs> whenever I hear about uh, people just min-maxing it to that kind of extent, it's like, I, I get it. Like, it's a different kind of, different kind of joy. But it's always just well, like a different language to me. I'll say to those people who are competitive players, who are who play craft worlds and are looking to beat Harlequin players, all you got to do is take scatter lasers. <laughs> I played in a in a tournament recently where you are allowed to know the army that the opponent is playing, which is a little silly, honestly. Um, and it it was just unfortunate that I got matched into a Harlequin player. But if you mass firepower scatter lasers. The Harlequin player literally has no chance. Yeah, yeah six in shots, a tournament, strength six, in a tournament, maybe nothing. When you're bringing yeah. that, and the old custodies player looks at you and goes, mm. "Yeah," and then you lose. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, it's, it's, even then though, it's honestly not bad because it is um, strength six. So you're winning everything on on uh, threes. threes, even still. Um, so scatter lasers, if you're trying to win, and you're trying to versus Tau and custodies and uh, Harlequins. Just mass out on your scatter lasers and you'll be fine. Easy peasy. You'll be happy to know that GSC came second in a tournament as well. Woo! I don't believe you. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> um, <laughs> if, if anybody wants a buying guide for the Eldar uh, at the moment, you just 
so go on the Games Workshop website and then search for everything that's temporarily out of stock online. Yeah, everything's out of stock. <laughs> <laughs> so oh, much of the crazy. store is out of stock at the moment. It's pretty crazy. Yeah. yeah. Um, I was really meaning to get one of those new box sets that um, that were half and half with the Chaos that had the Rangers and the Shroud Runners in it. Oh, yeah. Um, because I only actually have five Rangers and Shroud Runners other than the Phantom Titan are literally the only unit that I do not have in the collection. Um, so I was looking to buy them, but then my gosh, they're expensive and they sold out immediately as well. So <laughs> rest That's, in peace. That is the way of it. Yep. All right. Well, that brings eventually. us to our final thing, which we did touch on earlier, but they are teasing us once again in terms of Chaos Space Marines. It seems like, <laughs> what, we're going to get Nids and then the Knights's? Yeah. And then the and then chaos. What do you guys think? It'll be nids night night high, and then the <laughs> the nids, and then either demons or god. Yeah, man, I am so keen to finally see chaos back on the tables. It's just, it feels weird without chaos space marines. Um, I'm looking it's for. Like, I'm looking to see how two wound death guard turn up. Well, they have They've already two had wounds. it. They have two, they have two wounds. What? They have their own yes. codex. Surprise. Yeah. They've had Since two when? wounds for ages. Since Since they've had codex. two wounds for over a year. <laughs> they were one of the first so, books. Death Guard and Lies. Thousand Sons have two Lies. wounds apiece. Yeah. And their T5. Been, and, and their they, minus one damage. They just uh, they nerfed Disgustingly Resilient. Yeah. Yeah. Thousand Sons and um, Death Guard have had all the new cho- toys yeah. and tricks for ages. Well, like, oh. It's just things like World Eaters, Emperor's Children, and generic Chaos Factions like... The, the undivided the stuff, all the black stuff, legions. Yeah. Well, shows bears, how much like, I know. Night there you lords, go. Iron hands. I have, are, I have a Iron Death Guard army. Iron warriors. I'm Everyone's used. favorite chaos faction, <laughs> the Iron Hands. Yeah, they're all the same. They're all marines, wrong. guys. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. You brother. know what it is? It's going to be more weird for us to see everything that has two wounds. I would be so keen to see it happen. Um, yeah. I've definitely had the the itch to to paint up some of my chaos guys. I have not many of them. Like, I have a Chaos Lord and a Master of Possession a little bit. A few were absolved into the World Eaters uh, studio army. 100%, <laughs> man. I want to see a big mob of World Eaters. Oh, Especially... Yeah. We've got... You know, it's funny. We have three rhinos. No, we have four Chaos Rhinos, and we have 50 Berserkers. Yes. And then almost nothing else. <laughs> <laughs> so, Sounds like yeah. someone needs I another mean, Chaos Rhino. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If you guys want to see a bunch of rhinos and like fifty berserkers, then we got you covered. Easy peasy. So I I feel as though way. with this new like here comes the chaos. Um, surely it's going to be another one of the chaos legions having their own book as well. Surely mm-hmm. we're oh, gonna yeah. have either the oh, world leaders so. or the emperor's children just splitting off. Look, um, we we have enough book. chaos warbands to fit in the generic chaos codex. Um, I just, yeah, I would love to see world leaders get their own book. I'd love to see Emperor's Children get their own book. Um, just, just for the variety. I feel like Chaos gets underrepresented nowadays, so. You know who gets underrepresented is the Fallen, uh, almost exclusively. And I'm still bitter and twisted <laughs> about the White Dwarf. How did you turn Chaos, a Chaos release into Fallen, man? Fallen, we Fallen don't technically talk about the Fallen, Fallen anymore. The Fallen are in the Chaos book. <laughs> All right. Okay. So well, anyway, Marines. <laughs> uh, I would really like to see in, in the future. Somebody's I a bit think better. it would be better if they did the the individual legions of chaos. So world leaders, emperors, children, death guard, thousands. Like a supplement. If they did. If they did those as they are as their books, with the demons as a part of their book, and there was no demons codex, and there was no. Well, maybe like there's they, like a like generic with, thing um, for, for Chaos Age of or something. Um, like with Blades yeah, of Corn. Exactly, and... exactly like Age of Sigma, where you can run the mortals and the the um, and the demons alongside one Dude, another. I 100% that agree. That would be dope. 100% yeah, agree. Because then you could totally play things like Death Guard and have great and clean ones walking around. But or I, totally, you can have... I totally still have them in the generic Chaos Space Marines book, yeah. just so that you can have that variety, that mix. Yeah. Um. But it would be cool because then you can have 
undivided stuff if you wanted to, but you could also have things like blood tithe tables for corn, mm-hmm. um, warp storm tables for zench, things like that, where you like summon random corn units or something, or you have a bloodthirster that appears, or if your guy, if like your chaos lord kills another character and he becomes a demon prince or like becomes a bloodthirster, or like he just turns spawn. into one if you have enough killage. That would be awesome. <laughs> Fails his path of glory. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean... That'd be really tight. I, I do have to cut us off at this point because we are hitting past an hour. But, yeah. um, Jack, did you want to plug anything for Bat Raps coming up or anything? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, you guys know you can catch us every Thursday and you can catch us every Saturday. That's Australian Eastern Standard Time. Thursday night, Saturday uh, midday. We do streams twice a week. And otherwise, um, yeah, yeah, I think for on maybe in the works, we have some videos coming out as well. So we, we're, we're, on, we're on podcasts, mm-hmm. we're on streams. We're going to get we it all, may, baby. Yeah. You've seen Warhammer Plus, see Barnyard Plus soon. <laughs> yeah, Sigma coming soon. And we may have some actual traditional battle reports, edited battle reports coming back on the channel as well. And perhaps some painting videos as well. Stay tuned for a painting video of all of the Daughters of Cain that I plan, I wanted to do in like a month, and it will take me like six months, but you know, it'll be there. <laughs> we'll get it. We'll get a lot there. faster on the video, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. Told them. Well, um, I'd like to thank each of you guys. Oh, thank, thank you guys you. for coming along. No problem. For the, the very first episode of our Barnyard podcast. Thank you, Neanderthal host. Um, uh, the, ugh, the ugh. Thals will will come back. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Oh, looking forward and, to seeing uh, you next time. Yeah. Feel free to give us a like and subscribe, and we'll see you guys next week. Mm. And leave us a comment. Tell yes. us what you think. Yes. Yeah. Leave us a comment. If you what give do you us want a, to talk about next? If you give us a good enough comment, we might bring it up during the pod. So yeah, we'll pin you as well. Yeah. So without further ado. Thank you. See you later, everyone. Bye.